الحمد لله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعود بالله من شرور أنفسنا ونسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما مزيدا أما بعد حياكم الله وطبتم وطاب سعيكم ومشاكم وتبوأتم جميعا من الجنة منزلا We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and salutation upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his family and his sahaba and those who follow in his footsteps and we bear witness that there is no Lord worthy of worship beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam is his Prophet and Messenger he has fulfilled the message and he has guided the Ummah and he has shown them the truth. Whoever stays on it then he will be successful and whoever goes astray then he will be regretful. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are successful. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, firstly we would like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made this meeting available in one of the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where we remember the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is a glad tiding of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said مَجْتَمَعَ قَوْمٌ فِي بَيْتٍ مِنْ بِيُوتِ اللَّهِ يَتْلُونَ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَيَتَدَارَسُونَهُ فِيمَا بَيْهُنَهُمْ إِلَّا غَشِيَتْهُمُ الرَّحْمَةِ وَحَفَّتْهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ وَذَكَرَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي مَنْ عِنْدَهِ that the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said as what me may be translated as that's if a group of people come and meet in one of the houses of Allah, reading the book of Allah and studying it amongst themselves, except that the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bestowed upon them and that the angels descend amongst their gathering and surround them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions them in the high gatherings of the angels. And this is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who fall into that category. Allahumma ameen. And after that, we thank the Masjid Committee, may Allah reward them, for organizing this uh, little reminder titled The Preservation of the Quran. Hifd uh, Quran, how the Quran was preserved, and the stages that. Uh, led to that point and in order for us to speak about this subject inshallah we will break down a couple of aspects and speak about a general subject that this subject goes under it to understand it and with that inshallah maybe we open a door for other paths and other uh, lectures inshallah to that will branch out of this bidni rahman and uh, finally we thank you the brothers and the sisters for taking the time out the busy schedules and uh, b maybe learning and benefiting something that will aid you towards uh, rectifying the religion and doing more khair and good deeds. Uh, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who hear the speech and act by it and benefit from it. Allahumma ameen. So the Quran uh, is a big word and it's something that is always in our life as a Muslim always hear the Quran what does it mean and what effect does it have have in your life and how are you with the Quran it's obviously in the alone they are different topic and a different subject that maybe we can uh, speak about it for at least two hours three hours a couple of lessons just to understand the importance of the Quran in a Muslim's life to understand how effective the Quran in a Muslim's life. How the Muslim implements the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him to learn upon a Muslim. So therefore these are obviously different various subjects that maybe inshallah we will let that be covered in a bigger uh, and uh, lectures that are alone. But for us we would like to take just a benefit or two that assist us and help us understanding the stages of pre preservation of the Quran. And the Quran obviously it is something that is read. Something that is read. The general Arabic word 
in the linguistic sense of the Arabic language, Quran comes from Qara yaqra'u qira'atan. And it is something that is to be read. And Islamically or in the science of ulum al-Quran, the sciences of the Quran, which this subject branches off from, is that it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam, the final and the last messenger. And it starts with Surah Fatiha, as we know, and it ends with Surah Qul A'udhu Rabbin Nas, as we have in front of us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Insan, إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرْآنَ تَنْزِيلًا uh, surely, O Muhammad, we are the ones who have revealed the Qur'an upon you and the revelation gradually and uh, we will speak about that inshallah in more detail. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned that in the Qur'an. That he, he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that revealed the Qur'an to Muhammad alayhi salatu was salam. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Yusuf, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَرَبِيًّا لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ That indeed we have revealed it as an Arabic Qur'an so that you may comprehend. And this Qur'an that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a message that is general for the whole ummah of the Prophet sallallahu and it's suitable for every time, it's suitable for every place, it's suitable for any where it is being put. And it's the final complete message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the final revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it deserved to be preserved different to all of the other books and revelations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the messages. Because it's the final revelation, because it's the final message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people, because it, the Qur'an has guidelines and teachings for the human in his way and in his life, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved this Qur'an. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this beautiful Qur'an, in Surah Al-Furqan, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي نَزَّلَ, نزل الْفُرْقَانَ عَلَىٰ عَبْدِهِ لِيَكُونَ لِلْعَالَمِينَ نَذِيرًا Blessed be the revelation of the Qur'an. And Furqan is a, another name for the Qur'an, which means the divider, the clarifier between the truth and the wrong, between the truth and the falsehood. The one that he has revealed it upon his servant, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so it can be to all mankind and all of those who exist, including the jinn, including the jinn. Nadira uh, as a warner, as a warner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he revealed this Qur'an to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah An-Nisa about the messengers in general and what they have to give to the people. رُسُلًا مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنْذِرِينَ لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةٌ بَعْدَ الرُّسُلِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the messengers forth to the people and to the nation so they can be givers of good news and glad tidings and warners from the hellfire. Givers of good news for the Jannah and warners against going to the hellfire and doing sins and doing bad. Therefore, so these messengers can be as uh, evidence against the people after the messengers. And after the messengers, so the Quran and the, uh, and, uh, uh, the revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed will be used as an evidence against the people. And that's why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith that the Quran, well Quran, hujjatul laka aw alayk. The Quran could be a witness against you or witness with you. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Qur'an hujjatan lana la alayna. To make the Qur'an a witness with us, not against us, because that will be severe. And in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he said, uh, the fasting and the Qur'an will come on the day of judgment. They will be as a witnesses and intercessors for the person in the day 
of judgment. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make the Quran the one that intercedes for us, Allahumma ameen, and not against us. So therefore the Quran is great. And it's the message from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pure speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it has guidance and teachings for the people and for their life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has mentioned about this. نَزَلَ بِهِ الرُّوحُ الْأَمِينَ That the Qur'an is being uh, descended and, and given to Angel Jibreel alayhi salam to reveal it and to give it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing the, the, this great Qur'an إِنَّهُ لَقَوْلُ رَسُولٍ كَرِيمٍ that the quwwat in inda the arsh makin muta'in thamma amin wa ma sahibukum bi majnun wa laqad ra'ahu bil ufuq al mubin wa ma huwa ala al ghaybi bi dhanin and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said innahu la qur'anun karim fi kitabin maknun la yamassuhu illa al mutahharun this quran is being revealed by angel jibril alayhi salam from the best creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the most securest of messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this Quran, the book of Allah, it has protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the way it was revealed and passed on all through, through the stages that we will mention and speak about, also there is protection. There is no tahrif changing or any mishappening that happened to the Quran, never. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about this final beautiful message from him subhanahu wa ta'ala that he revealed upon, uh, that he gave to uh, Jibreel alayhi salam and Jibreel upon that gave it and revealed it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu lahafidun So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said surely we are the one who revealed the revelation the Qur'an, the dhikr, and surely we are to it our protectors. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the duty of preserving the Qur'an upon himself, different to the previous books and revelation. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made that the stages that this Qur'an is go, goes through and we will speak about, all of them are from the most securest ways and is being passed down through the most securest ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gave this Qur'an for the, the human and the jinn alike. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَإِذَا صَرَّفْنَا إِلَيْكَ نَفَرًا مِّنَ الْجِنِّ يَسْتَمِعُونَ الْقُرْآنِ The jinns also hear the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says in Surah Al-Jinn, قُلْ أُوحِيَ إِلَيَّ أَنَّهُ اسْتَمَعَ نَفَرٌ مِّنَ الْجِنِّ فَقَالُوا إِنَّا سَمِعْنَا قُرْآنًا عَجَبًا The jinn, they heard the Qur'an. They said, surely we heard a great Qur'an. Yahdi in a rush, it guides to the straight path, to the guidance. فَآمَنَّا بِهِ They believed in it. Even the jinns at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and the believing jinns. So therefore this message is given for the humans and the jinns alike. And therefore if they believe in it and understand it, they will enter Jannah with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if they act upon it as well. From the human and the jinn alike. And if they disbelieve in it or deny it, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to protect this ummah from such characteristics is that if they do, then they will go and enter into the hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. And therefore this Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about it, إِنَّا عَلَيْنَا جَمْعَهُ وَقُرْآنَ فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبَعَ قُرْآنَ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the revelations at the beginning, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was revealing uh, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Angel Jibreel to go and to reveal the Qur'an to the Prophet sallallahu at the beginning of the wahi and the revelation, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he was a literate person, he didn't know what to do, so he was reading the Qur'an whilst Angel Jibreel uh, alayhi salam was reading the Qur'an and teaching it to him without, because he didn't want to miss it, because he didn't want to forget it. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the messenger, Inna alayna jam'ahu wa qur'ana. That don't worry, we're the one who's going to collect it in your heart and we're going to make you read it. فَإِذَا قَرَأْنَاهُ فَاتَّبِعْ قُرْآنَ So when Angel Jibreel reads it to you, then you follow after that. 
So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then after that started listening first, then he would repeat, then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will make it get memorized in his heart. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to show the importance of this Quran and that every ayah in it is great and it has to be heard and it has to be listened to and it has to be benefited. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, وَإِذَا قُرِئَ الْقُرْآنَ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْصِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ That when the Quran is being recited, it has to be heard too. And with these ayat, then a person will mean that when the Quran is recited, he has to have respect for the Quran. And these are from the adab and the manners that a person has to have in regards to the Quran. That he has to listen to the Quran and benefit from it and not be like the previous nations. When any revelation of Quran is being given to them, and is, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reads it for, to them, they would put their hands in their ears and they would start running around and running away from the Quran. So therefore, a person when the Quran is ready has to have respect for that Quran and learn the Quran and benefit from the Quran. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala He has mentioned that this Quran is general and it is benefiting. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala called it a book from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala meaning that it is a combination, as the scholar said, for all of the fruits that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect, collected in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it uh, in Surah Al-Nahl, وَنُنَزِّلُ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابَ تِبْيَانًا لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ And O Muhammad, we reveal the Quran or the book to you, upon you, and it has clarification for everything. And therefore, the Quran subhanallah has a beneficial combination of all of the fruits and all of the sciences and all of the benefits that will help the human in, the, in this dunya and it will help him to enter into the akhirah. It has the way of success for him in this dunya. It has the means of life and the means of living in this dunya as well. It has teachings and instructions and, and, and guidances and warning for the person so it can keep him alright in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has protected this Qur'an and he called it various names and he also glorified it in various ways. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it Qur'an inna hadha al-Qur'an yahdi lillati hiya aqwab Surely this Qur'an guides to what is best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it the kitab as we just mentioned لَقَدْ أَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ كِتَابًا فِيهِ ذِكْرَكُمْ That surely we have revealed to you a book that has it, the, the remembrance for you in it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called the Al-Furqan and, and, and this surah, there, there is a surah named after it, Surah Al-Furqan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tabarak al-ladhi nazzal al-Furqan ala abdihi liyakuna lil'alamina nadira. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also called it dhikr. Inna nahnu nazzalna al-dhikra wa inna lahu lahafidun. A remembrance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it as well tanzil, a revelation. وَإِنَّهُ لَتَنزِيلُ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Surely it is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of all that exists. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also called it dhikr, or rather the most important dhikr. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ As a consequence, that whoever objectifies the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and restrains from it or stays away from it, then surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pro promised him with a miserable life. فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ He will have the most miserable of life. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى And in the day of judgment he will be resurrected blind. قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا Oh my Lord, why did you resurrect me blind when I was seeing? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, because you forgot our dhikr in this dunya, كَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Like today will be forgotten about you as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who do not, not neglect the Qur'an. And the Qur'an, sadly, in our time, is something that the people only focus on in Ramadan. And now we approach Ramadan, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who approach Ramadan upon goodness and to... Uh, uh, Allah, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong our life to reach till this, the, the next Ramadan. Allahumma ameen. Uh, the, 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 the reality is that a lot of people, they only read the Quran or complete the Quran in Ramadan only. When Ramadan comes, they, they, they pick the Quran up from the shelf and remove the dust from it 
and they start reading it. That's, and that's a sad reality. The Quran has to be read on a regular basis. The, the, the Muslim has to have a couple of uh, completions of the Quran. Who says that you will have certainty or assurance that you will reach to the next Ramadan if you're going to read the Quran only in every Ramadan? So the Quran has to be in a Muslim's life. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ Whoever objectifies and rejects and stays away from the remembrance of Allah, then he will have a miserable life. It's a promise from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep us away from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this Quran light and nur. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ بُرْهَانٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكُمْ نُورًا مُّبِينًا that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to you a light and guidance for you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it huda, guidance, and shifa, cure from all types of illnesses, physical and spiritual. Wa rahmah, and mercy. Wa maw'idah, advice. All of this is in, 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 in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it, as what came in um, uh, Surah Yunus. يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ مَوْعِدَةٌ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَشِفَاءٌ لِمَا فِي الصُّدُورِ وَهُدًا وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Oh people, and this is a general ayah for all the people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aimed it at. The believing and the non-believing, because this Quran is sent for all, so they can believe, they become believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if a person looks at the Quran, the scholars say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls upon the people and the believers in, in various ways, if you wanted to sp speak to the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will refer to them, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to the human a kind, the believing them or of them, and the non-believing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to them, Ya ayyuhal nas. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Oh people, there is a revelation and guidance that has came to you, advice from your Lord and cure to what is in the heart, the physical and the emotional and the uh, literal, everything. A, a cure for the heart. Wahuda wa rahma and guidance and mercy lil mu'minin to the believers specifically. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it majid, bal huwa Quran majid, glorified Quran because of, it, because of what it has came. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it aziz, honored and mighty. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالذِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَزِيزٌ Surely it is a great, honorable Qur'an, mighty Qur'an from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the scholars mention many other me names that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. We just wanted to benefit some of them so it can give us a little indication of how beautiful this Qur'an that is between our hands. The revelations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are of kinds. We have two types of revelation, mainly as the scholars mentioned, the, uh, the, the wahyain, which is the Qur'an and the hadiths. The Qur'an is the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is used to, as a mean of ibadah. You ta'abbad bih and you ta'abbad bi qira'atih. That we use, by reading it, we use it as a way of worship to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the hadith divides into two categories. Al-Hadith al-Qudsi, which is also the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we don't use it for ibadah. And the hadith al-Nabawi, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all of them are hadith. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all of them are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified that to us in Surah Al Najm. That, وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa does not utter anything from his own whims or desires. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى But surely it is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is revealed to him. And therefore, anything that comes from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed it to him. The, the, therefore, we have two types of revelation, the Quran and the, the, the Hadith, and the Hadith, there is Hadith Qudsi and Hadith Nabawi, Hadith from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and the Hadith of uh, 
the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. As for the Quran, this great miracle, the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, pure speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala. The wording of this Quran and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa taala, this beautiful Quran, alaikum salam. Allah subhanahu wa taala used it to uh, challenge the Arabs at that time and challenge those who were denying the Quran and those who were trying to make a mockery of the Quran. Alaykum salam. And the Arabs, they could not compete this with this challenge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, فَأْتُوا بِمِثْلِهِ Bring something like it, like the Quran. They couldn't. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their competition for them. فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ Bring a surah like it. They couldn't, a chapter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he, may, he, he said, فَأْتُوا بِآيَةٍ مِّن مِثْلِهِ one ayah, try even your best to bring one ayah as a challenge. And they couldn't. Because it's the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, some of the scholars mentioned that from the benefits of this ayat, uh, at the beginning of the surah, with the random letters, that only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows their meaning. Alif lam mim, alif lam mim sad, alif lam ra, alif la kaf ha ya ayn sad. Hamim, Ain, Sin, Qaf, all of these letters, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the meaning of. Some of the scholars went into interpretation of this meaning. None of, none, none of the scholars had a strong evidence in reg regards to what they based it upon. Some tried to definition, but generally the scholars agree upon majority of them that the meaning is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, no, they are not known much. But the scholars mention that from what we can benefit from this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling those who are from the Arabs who thought they were immaculate and good at the Arabic language that this is your own language and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used it to challenge you and you still can't even produce something like it. As a challenge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This beautiful Quran that we have is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned is revealed to the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the first messenger Jibreel alayhi salam and then after that from Jibreel alayhi salam it was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this wahi and revelation the scholars spoke about it it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave it to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the wahi is, is of many types. The revelation is of many types. Some of the revelation is like for the Prophets when they had dreams in regards to the revelation. And that's how usually the Prophet starts his prophethood. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send him signs through his dream. We know that through the story of which Prophet who had a dream that was turned into a revelation or is a revelation, then he had to fulfill that dream. Naam? Yusuf alayhi salam and Ibrahim. Naam? Yusuf alayhi salam and Ibrahim and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. As in the hadith of Aisha, Sahih Muslim, that the first, awwalu ma bada al wahi, as it came in Sahih Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anhu mentioned, that the first thing that the wahi started with, uh, with in regards to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, Ar-Ru'ya, it is that it is the dream. And that it would become true with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's the first stages of revelation. Then uh, Angel Jibreel alayhi salam will reveal the rest of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ha, uh, has willed to his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it wahi in the ayah that we just used in Surah Al-Jinn. In huwa illa wahyun yuha. The Quran and, and, and the hadith is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given upon to the, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars then clarified how did this revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was, was given to the angels. And we might, as the scholars say, we will understand this from the third ayah of Surah Al-Baqarah, as the scholars mentioned. That in the Quran, 
in this ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قَالُوا أَتَجْعَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed and revealed to the angels that I am going to make a predecessor upon the earth. The angels said, Oh Allah, why would you uh, 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 make somebody predecessor that is going to destroy the earth and they're going to shed blood? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inni a'lamu ma la ta'lamu. Surely I know what you do not know. The angels said this because before the humans, there was jinns. Alaykum as wa rahmatullahi Before the humans, jinns lived on earth. And the jinns were the ones who messed around and destroyed earth and shed a lot of blood. So therefore, when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels that, and revealed to the angels that, that uh, I will be creating and putting a predecessor on earth. They, they were questioning this in a sense, and not questioning the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the angels, لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون That they do not disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever He commands them, and they obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever He commands them with. But they, because they seen something, and they thought that this will happen again. They said to Allah, what, what, what is the reason? What is the wisdom be, behind this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them, I will create what you do not know. And I know what you do not know. So because, there was the, the, because of the jinns, the Allah, uh, because there was jinns and the jinns messed around, the humans thought the same thing, the next creation will do the same thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected this and made this different to the jinns. And therefore, majority of the jinns are the disobedient one and the originality in jinn kind are lying and the believers of, from the jinns are the minority uh, the believers from the jinns are the minority and if any, if any of the jinns they believe as we mentioned they will enter jannah they will become believers and also enter jannah and if they become disbelievers then they will be like their father Iblis and they will enter hellfire. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also spoke about this revelation to the angels. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the angel in Surah Al-Anfal, ayah number 12. إِذْ يُوحِ, إذ يوحي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals to the, uh, to the angels that surely I am with you, so assist the believers. And this is in regards to the war, when they were going to war with the believers in the battles at the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's why in the hadith also, hadith of the companion, and Nawas ibn Sam'an radiallahu anh, he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, as was uh, narrated in, by Imam Al-Tabarani, that إِذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَىٰ أَنْ يُوحِي بِالْأَمْرِ تَكَلَّمَ بِالْوَحِي وَأَخَذَتِ السَّمَاءُ مِنْهُ رَجْفَةِ And that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to reveal something, He revealed it. He said, it doesn't mean the Qur'an, obviously the Qur'an as we know, is being revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam over how many years? 23 years, naam, asallahu alayk. It's been revealed over 23 years of da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So how could it be that it's revealed in Laylatul Qadr? The scholars here went into interpretation, they said, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given the permission that the Qur'an gets taken from Allah al-Mahfud and it is revealed in and, 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 and descended in Baytul Izzah in the house or the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ruled in the heavens, in the, in, the, in the world, the heaven, in the heaven of the world, the first heaven. And therefore, from that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command angel Jibreel to take the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu and reveal it to him and teach it to him over the span of 23 years. And the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned this 
in regards to the hadith and what the Sahaba have mentioned, like what Abdullah ibn Abbas has mentioned, he said, "Anzal Allah al-Quran jumla wahida ila al-sama'i dunya laila al-qadr." That Allah subhanahu wa taala revealed the Quran in one go from the Lawh al-Mahfud, as the scholars mentioned, uh, uh, to al-sama'i dunya to the world, the heaven, the first heaven, uh, in in laila al-qadr. ثم أنزل ب... ثم أنزل بعد ذلك بعشرين سنة دنا الله سبحانه وتعالى uh, with his permission he revealed it through angel Jibril to the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم over twenty years meaning twenty three years because the Arabs used to round the numbers a lot like you guys have in maths in maths class there you have rounding of the numbers exactly the same thing the Arabs used to say used to do the same thing. And then Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu an, he uh, as as me, as mentioned in the hadith that is narrated by Imam al Nasai, the, uh, uh, he he after that he read the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa taala said, "Wala yatuna kabi mithli bi mithlin illa jina kabil haqi wa ahsana tafsira." And the people cannot bring you with something like it except that we brought you with the truth. And something that has the best interpretation and meaning, meaning the Quran. Wa Quran al Farraqnahu li taqra'a li taqra'ahu ala nasi ala muktin wa nazzalnahu tanzila. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that this Quran we have divided it and portionized it for you, so you can read it to the people. In a time span, in 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 chunks, in 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 tw over the twenty-three years of the da'wah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, what is the now tanzila? And we have revealed it to you gradually. And this is from the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa taala that He revealed the Quran upon the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, as Allah mentioned in this ayah, gradually on the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, not in one go. Because if it was given in one go, then it will be too hard, rather maybe even impossible, for the people to preserve that and look after it, or even to memorize it and act upon it. And the evidence for this is the previous books and the previous revelation that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed. All of the previous revelation, it was revealed to the Prophet at one go. And this was one of the wisdoms of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and it caused as well that the, those revelations will be. Changed and not memorized properly, but because the Quran was revealed over time and a period, and not in one go and gradually, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala made it easier for the people to memorize in their hearts, and it made it easier for the Sahaba to memorize in their hearts, and that's why the likes of so many companions that they used to say, the Sahaba who used to teach us the Quran, they would teach us only ten ayat. And they would not allow us to go past ten ayat until we read them and memorized them and acted by them and understood their meaning and their tafsir, and then we moved on to the next ten ayat. That's how they memorized the Quran. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from the wisdom of the Quran, as we see as well, is that He revealed it gradually, so it can give messages to the people gradually, because there's certain incidents that happen in the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that needed answers. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed. The correct answer for them through these revelations, through these revelations, and we will come to that inshallah when we will come to uh, speak about, for example, asbab al nuzul, the reasons behind certain surah why, why they were revealed, the reasons behind behind the revelation for the certain ayat and certain surah, and all of these that this subject that we're speaking about it is found under the science called ulum al Quran. The sciences of the Quran is found under the science called Ulum al Quran and the science of the Quran. And Ulum al Quran talks about so about so many th things. It talks about the Quran itself, the preservation of the Quran, which is one of the subjects that we are speaking about now. And it talks about the tertib of the Quran, the order of the Quran that, that it came in. And this tertib is of many levels. This order is of many levels. How Allah Subhanahu wa Taala revealed the order of revelation of the surah is different to the order of the Quran that is combined in front of us. 
from Surah Al-Fatiha, then Al-Baqarah, then Ali Imran, and so on and so on, till Qulu Allah Ahad, Qulu Ahad Rabb Al-Falaq, Qulu Ahad Rabb Al-Nas. That's different. So there's different types of tartibs and different types of uh, orderings of the Quran, and we will, that, that comes also under the science of Ulum Al-Quran. It speaks about the tafsir of the Quran. And all of this subject, ulum al-Qur'an, is necessary for a person to understand and to make tadabbur and tafsir over the Qur'an. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned that this Qur'an, wa ahsana tafsira, he has, a person has to have to have tafsir and understand. And that's why the Qur'an is revealed. It's not so it can be read, even though that is one of the main reasons. But rather from the main reasons of the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ In more than one place in the Qur'an. أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا They contemplate and ponder and understand the Qur'an. So the benefit from the Qur'an and one of the great benefits of the Qur'an is to understand it. It is to understand it. <coughs> so then we say that this, this is the hadith uh, where Abdullah ibn Mas'ud explains to us how the Qur'an was revealed in those stages. And also, after that, Angel Jibreel will take the Qur'an from Baytul Izza in the world, the heavens, and then after that gives it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and he will teach it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over the 23 years. And that's why the, the, the scholars, they mentioned that the way that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala revealed, as we said, the Qur'an to Angel Jibreel, and then the angel Jibreel sends it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu In recap, is that Allah, uh, angel Jibreel, he will hear the command from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and the revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala first, as we mentioned in the hadith. Then after that, angel Jibreel, he memorizes it and takes it with the permission of Allah from Allah al Mahfud. And then from Allah al Mahfud, it gets sent down to the Baytul Izza in the worldly heavens. And then from Baytul Izza, with the permission of Allah, Angel Jibreel takes it and gives it to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is supported by the hadith that we just mentioned of the companion and Nawas Ibn Sam'an and majority of the scholars agree from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah agree upon this type of uh, order that how the Quran was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the Qur'an obviously is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any doubt. You maybe even forgot to mention that at the beginning, but without any doubt, this is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the belief of Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah, that the Qur'an is the direct actual speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah read it and said it with a pure voice, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a manner suiting and befitting him. We do not know what this manner is and how. But this is what we're told according to what the Prophet Sallallahu and what Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said about himself. As it came in, su in ayat Surah At-Tawbah. وَإِنْ أَحَدٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ اسْتَجَارَكَ فَأَجِرْهُ حَتَّى يَسْمَعَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And if any of the believers come and ask, then uh, guide him and teach him the Qur'an until he listens to the speech of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So the Qur'an is the Kalamullah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referred to the Qur'an, Kalamullah, the actual direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this all will, will obviously mean as well that the Qur'an, there is no way it can be tarnished. And it's not something that is made by the Prophet sallallahu himself. Like some of the atheists and those who might try to uh, show bad picture about Islam and try to mess up the, the, the chain of narration of the Quran and so on, they say, ah, oh, it is what Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. And that's what the, the, mush the mushrikeen at the time of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Quraysh, they said that it is magic. They call the Quran magic. You know, the Sahir Mubin, and that the Prophet Sallallahu is a great magician, and he's the head of magicians. Because they, if they said it's the speech of Allah, then they would agree upon that. They would, do, they would notice the truth, but they didn't admit to that. They couldn't admit to that. And therefore, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, 
have preserved this Quran and obviously has made this Quran from the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to prove that this point is the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not the speech of Angel Jibreel and not the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said as in Surah Al-Baqarah وَقَدْ, وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقًا مِّنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ and group of them used to listen and hear the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the Quran. And also, وَمَا يَمْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَىٰ إِلَّا وَحْيٍ يُوحَىٰ Anything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said is not from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, it's a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, including the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that's what they used to say. They used to say, إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا قَوْلُ الْبَشَرِ they, they tried to make a mockery at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they used to say that this Qur'an is only the speeches of a human, meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, Am yaquluna taqawwala? They say that the Prophet said this, or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, Bal la yu'minun, surely they don't believe. فَلْيَأْتُوا بِحَدِيثٍ مِثْلِهِ إِنْ كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ If this is the case, if this is the speech of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then okay, do something like what the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam did. You're claiming now the Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said it, and it's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do like what Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is doing. Bring something like it. Fa'atu bi hadithin mithli. Bring something like the Quran. Try. They can't. And that's where the competition, or the, the, the challenge rather, we say, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to these people that claim that the Quran is, is, is from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or Jibreel or whoever. Rather it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any doubt as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has clarified himself. And then the revelation re revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Angel Jibreel as we mentioned, it could, the revelation to the Messenger alayhi salam is of types. The revelation to the Messenger alayhi salam is of types. The first is the Ru'ya Saliha, as we mentioned, and as Aisha radiallahu anha said, the, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, the first thing that he started with, awwalu ma budi abihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al Ru'ya Saliha. The first thing that was revealed and the revelation started to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is uh, dreams that would become a reality and it's right, good, good dreams. And after that, as well, and this obviously, as we mentioned, this is the way for all of the prophets as well. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them. And also, there is another stage that was unique to Musa alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in one incident, which is the direct speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Musa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam was was the, one of the prophets or the prophet that spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly without means of any other type of uh, 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 you, uh, angel Jibreel or sleep or, or, or um, saliha, dreams of, of such because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَىٰ تَكْلِيمًا and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa with actual speech with actual speech Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa alayhi salam with actual speech pure with the sound of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it happened in the story or in the incident of al-Isra wal miraj The last ayat, the two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah was revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him also salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that story in, in Sahih Muslim and as what well came in, in the authentic hadith of Isra and Mi'raj, the story of ascension, the journey by night from Mecca to Jerusalem, Palestine, and then from Jerusalem, Palestine, all the way to the heavens outside the universe, subhanAllah, outside the galaxies and the solar system, all the way up to the first heaven, and through the seven heavens where he met the prophets. And after the heavens, Allah, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ruled that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes beyond Sidratul Muntaha. The lot tree of boundary. The boundary that even Angel Jibreel alayhi salam was not allowed and cannot go beyond. 
And this is showing an honor and a status that is given to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that nobody else has been given. Not even Angel Jibreel alayhi salam, the best of the creation. And then after that, after he went to beyond the tree of boundary, he was in the direct presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as, as uh, Umm al-Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha, she mentioned, and she, uh, she was asked, does that mean that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam seen Allah directly? She said no. And she said, I was the first of this ummah, first person of this ummah, to ask this to, a question to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَقَدْ رَآهُ نَزْلَةٍ أُخْرَى عِنْدَ سِدْرَةِ الْمُنْتَهَى Meaning Angel Jibreel alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa seen Angel Jibreel in that journey, in his real form. And uh, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not see Allah. Nobody can see Allah in this dunya. Rather, the believers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, 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 in the yawm al-qiyamah when they enter Jannah. And this is the greatest pleasantry that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give and the greatest reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, can give to the believers. Is that when they enter Jannah, as it came in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, is there anything else I can bestow upon you and give you? They say, oh Allah, you have saved us from the hellfire. And you have entered this Jannah. What else do we want more? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals the veil of light. And the believers will be able to see their Lord. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that سَتَرَوْنَ رَبَّكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مِثْلَ هَذَا الْقَمَرِ لَا تُضَعْمُونَ مِنْهُ شَيْئًا That you will be able to see your Lord like you see this moon, one day the Sahaba was looking at the, a beautiful moon, clear moon. They said, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said to them, you will be able to see your Lord like you see this beautiful moon. You will not be able, your eyes will not be able to hurt you. And then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as evidence for this point said, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَى وَزِيَادَةً For those who do, did good, they will have al-husna, they will have al-husna which is Jannah as the scholars of tafsir mention. Waziyada, an increase, what is better than Jannah? The sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and having the honor of looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said, Wujuhi yawma idhin nadira ila rabbiha nadira. That faces will be looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to their Lord. Surely they will be looking at their Lord. And wallahi, this is the greatest pleasantry that the people of the believers from the Muslims that will earn and gain in the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who have the honor. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who have the honor of seeing their Lord in Yawm al Qiyamah and in Jannah. Allahumma ameen. أقول قول هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم السائر المسلمين. We will stop here for today, inshallah, until we we kind of make a conclusion after salah for five minutes, and then if Allah subhanahu wa taala wills, we will make another series, inshallah, to complete what we started in regards to the the order of the Quran and the ayat and the sur and the rest of the points in regards to preservation of the Quran. جزاكم الله خير and may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you for your time and your listening and your patience. وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم <تصفيق> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاه والسلام على اشرف الانبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين so ان شاء الله we've been given uh, the permission to carry on for five minutes ان شاء الله so we just uh, try our best ان شاء الله to conclude our reminder of in and what is in regards to the preservation of the quran from the ways of the Qur'an that was preserved, the Qur'an was uh, revealed and the scholars well, have divided into a category, two categories in regards to the place it was revealed in. The meaning the Mecca and the Madani. So quickly, who can tell us what this Mecca revelation and what this Madani revelation mean? Naam. What does it mean? Okay. Can you translate for the brothers? <laughs> so the brother Barakallahu Fi was that Allah He said that 
For example, like Surah Baqarah is Makkiyah, and it means it has been re uh, revealed in Mecca. It has been revealed in Mecca. That is one understanding from the understanding of the scholars, and it's about three quarters yes. correct. Yes. Three quarters correct. Why? Because what the scholars mean by Mecca and Madani, the Mecca is what has been revealed before the Hijrah, and the Madani what has been revealed after the Hijrah. The scholars divide it into Mecca and Madani, in regards to the place. Like the Mecca, even when the Prophet ﷺ went to a Ta'if, that was outside Mecca. But that will still be classified as a Mecca because it was revealed before Hijrah. And when the Prophet ﷺ was in Medina, anything that it was revealed to him, like the ayat that was revealed to him whilst he was in Hajjatul Wada' in Mecca, and whilst he was in battles and expeditions and wars outside Medina, Anything that is revealed after Hijrah, it will still be classified as Madani. Even if he's in Mecca. Like the ayah, اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ولا أرضيت لكم الإسلام دينا. Umar al-Khattab رضي الله عنه, he said, I swear by Allah, I know when it was revealed and where it was revealed. It was revealed in the day of Arafah, ninth day of the Hijjah, before the Eid al-Adha, and it was whilst the Prophet ﷺ was standing on the mountain of Arafah. But that ayah is Madani. Why? Because it was after Medina. It's the last day of the Prophet ﷺ in his last Hajj. Last and only Hajj. Hajjatul Wada'a. So the scholars said the Madani and the Makki. The Makki is before the Hijrah. The Madani is after the Hijrah. There is benefits from this that we can extract and benefit from it to help us to understand the preservation of the Quran from it, from in a general sense. General sense. If a surah is Makki, not necessarily we mean the whole surah, every single ayah. It doesn't mean that the whole surah and every single ayah is Mecca, but sometimes it would mean that certain ayat from it could be Madani as well. And sometimes if it's Madani, not all of it is Madani, but it could be Mecca as well. And also, from the benefits of the Mecca and Madani, the Mecca from it is uh, 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 styles and from what we can speak about the Madani, Mecca, the Mecca is short majority of the time. The verses of the ayat are short and they are harsh and severe. Why? Who can maybe give us a reason, maybe or anybody that has studied this or went through this or can just summarize and extract from this. Why do you think Mecca would be harsh and short and severe? The, uh, the types of ayat. The Muslims go under persecution. Yes, that was true, but that's not the answer for what we are looking for. Could you increase the iman? Almost there. I'll give you 20% for that one. Alhamdulillah, barakallahu feekum. The reason is because it was aimed at people that were hypocrites, those who denied the religion those who haven't even believed in the religion. So the ayat was short because majority of the people, what did they do like they did to Nuh and other prophets? If they heard a revelation or something like that, they would put their ear, hands in their ears. They didn't want to listen. So the ayat had to be precise, short, so it can hit them. And they had to be harsh because it was used against them for argument reasons and to subject it to them, to face them with this. So they, there's no running away. So like the ayat of punishment or the ayat of adab or the warning for the believers or telling them or the people telling them to become Muslim or telling them to listen to the Quran and learn and go from these ahkam. The scholars mentioned that from the benefits of the Mecca is that the ayat of the Mecca revelation is that they were short and harsh because it was aimed at people that had shirk or they were still new. So it removes all of that from them. Warning and, and severity in it. And then the Madani style will be opposite to that. Majority of the ayat in it will be long. Like the ayah of Wudu and Tahara. Like the ayah that has the ahkam of what is halal to be eaten and what is not halal to be eaten. Inna al khamru wal maysiru and, and the, the, those types of ayat where it has legislated rulings of the Sharia. It has Sharia rulings. 
Because now they were in Medina, the Iman is established in the heart. The people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was aiming these at, they were mu'mins, they were believers, they were the Muslims, they were setting up a new, uh, a new uh, uh, nation in the Medina. So the ayat it was for, for, that was aimed at to them, it was uh, to teach them their religion in more detail. Because now the, there is no need for harshness. Because they accepted the religion now. So now the ayat is, of, uh, they are nice and light, and they're not harsh like the Mecca, most of the Mecca ayat. And because they, 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 it was the style that it was aimed at and the, the audience that it was aimed at. The audience it was aimed at. This can be extracted as well from what we can benefit in regards to the Mecca and the Madani. Also, from the ben benefits of uh, this great subject that falls under the science of Ulum al-Quran, the sciences of the Quran, this, this matter of Hifd al-Quran, al-Quran, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserved the Quran in various stages and everything, comes now to the stage we spoke about how Allah revealed it to, uh, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to the angel Jibreel, and how angel Jibreel alayhi salam revealed it to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then the next stage is how the Quran was revealed at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and after that. And that is divided into three main stages. We go into them in quick shortness uh, and, and in conclusionness. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules in another meeting, maybe we'll go in detail so we can benefit from it more. But there is three stages that the Quran went through in regards to its collection and combining and its preservation. The time, at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whilst he was alive in the era of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in the era and the time of Abu Bakr radiallahu and his leadership, and in the time of Uthman radiallahu and his leadership. And this is with the agreement of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah and Jama'ah. The first stage is when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's time is that when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the Quran revealed to him, he would teach it to the Sahaba as soon as it was revealed to him. And the Sahaba, some of them, will memorize the Quran and majority of them would memorize the Quran from the Prophet ﷺ after hearing it. And most of them were illiterate, some of them could not write, majority of them could not write. There were examples like some of the companions that were writers, like Zayd ibn Thabit al-Ansari radiallahu an. Ali. And Ali, naam, and Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an as well. And few other Sahabas, but these are the main examples. And we mention Zayd ibn Thabit because he will be with us in the three stages. He will be with us in the story of the three stages. Zayd ibn Thabit was young, a teenager at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu whilst he was alive. He was from the Sahaba that managed to memorize and learn the whole Quran from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he had the unique honor which was rare amongst the Sahaba to listen to the whole Quran whilst it's being read by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the last year of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ramadan. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam read it twice complete in Ramadan. And therefore Zayd ibn Thabit was one of those rare. And from the, there was eight Sahaba, the scholars say, there was eight Sahaba only who memorized the whole Quran whilst the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was alive. After the death of the Prophet some more Sahaba memorized the Quran. From the Sahaba that memorized the Quran is, as we said, like Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an, and Salim, the, the freed slave of Abu Hudayfa radiallahu an, and Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, and a couple of more other companions, but no more than eight that memorized the whole Quran. But Zayd ibn Thabit was one of the ones as well that were known as the writers of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would call him and tell him to write down the ayat and back in those times the writing would be either in leaves of tree like palm trees or the skin of animals or the bones like the hip bone and the shoulder bone because they are flat bones and on uh, slates and slabs of, of uh, uh, stones Anything that they had to, the, the ability to engrave and to write the Quran with. 
But the Quran was not written as a whole in complete book. For example, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu that started in the era of Abu Bakr, and that leads us to the time and the era of Abu Bakr. So in the time and in the era of Abu Bakr, few indiscrepancies started to happen. A lot of people start to make riddah and return against the religion of Islam, and some denied zakah, and some like Musaylam al-Kaddab, Musaylam al who claimed to be a prophet, they started popping out like worms out of the wood, as they say. And then after that, this caused a lot of problems. So uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him with Jannah and have mercy upon him for what he has done to protect Islam is what he has done. He fought them. He fought those people. So Islam could be strong and it stays strong and there's no indiscrepancies in it. And the scholars all say it was because after the will of Allah and the decision of Abu Bakr to wage war against those that protected Islam and preserved Islam in general. And if it wasn't for that, then it would be different and it would not have reached as strong as it is today. But this is the will of Allah and the wisdom of Allah that with the wisdom of Abu Bakr that this happened. Majority of the Sahaba at that time didn't agree with him, but then they seen the benefit. And they seen the wisdom behind Abu Bakr. And that's why Abu Bakr, he was chosen to be the first from the Prophet Sallallahu successors to go after him in, in, in regards to ruling and looking after the Islamic Ummah. And because of that, Allah, uh, the Quran was preserved. And in the battle, like the battle of the Yamama, where a majority of the Sahaba who were memorizers died, who memorized the Quran, like the, uh, uh, who, who, who memorized the Quran, like Salim, uh, 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 the freed slave of Abu Hudayfa, they died in such of these, uh, exa and many others, they died in such uh, uh, battles. So because of that, then Umar ibn Khattab, he said that majority of the Sahaba are dying, those who memorize the Quran, we fear that the Quran might be lost, so we need to put it in a book. To Abu Bakr. Uh, to Abu Bakr and then after that, Abu Bakr at first became hesitant. He didn't want to. Then Umar ibn Khattab, started giving him advances like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it a book kitab and mubina Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it a book and the reason is that Abu Bakr didn't want to do something new outside the, of, of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah opened the heart of Abu Bakr to this idea and then Abu Bakr got the companion Zayd ibn Thabit amongst the other companions to start this great job and Zayd ibn Thabit was a teenager young he had the biggest project ever in Islam to collect and combine the Quran. So Zayd ibn Thabit said about himself, I started collecting the Quran from parishments, meaning pieces of papers or whatever they had at that time, and, and bones and, and the, 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 from the hearts of the men, meaning from the memorization of the Sahaba. And then he started writing it and combined it in a, one Quran and one book, and that Quran stayed with Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. After he agreed, all of the Sahaba agreed and everything, and checked by Zayd ibn Thabit because he had, as we said, he was the writer for the Prophet He was also had the honor of hearing the whole Quran from the Prophet He read the Quran to the Prophet and he was a teenager, Subhanallah. And now teenagers can barely make a cup of tea, and the Sahaba at those times was the teenagers. Imagine the greatest project of combining the whole Quran and some of them were leaders, the Prophet Sallallahu and other Sahaba would put young companions, teenagers, as leaders of, uh, of armies and battles so they can go and uh, op uh, spread the religion of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. This is encouragement for the teenagers that they need to step up to the plate as they say. And they need to ask themselves what they have done for Islam up to now. And have they learned anything in regards to the aspect of the religion? Because there is, imagine, we have more than 6,000 ayat in the Qur'an to be memorized, my dear respected brothers and sisters. We have thousands and thousands, tens and thousands of hadith to be memorized. If we don't memorize them with the will of Allah, who's going to memorize them? Is it going to be Stephen and John that's walking outside the street? No, Allah. Rather, it's going to be Muhammad and Khalid. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rules for them, that they're going to be from the memorizers of the Qur'an and memorizers of the hadith. So we encourage our sahab and all of the Muslims and all of the brothers and the sisters, young and old, to memorize the Quran, especially those who are young. Like Imam Ibn Hajar, 
Al-Asqalan, he, he might have said and he might have mentioned as it came in some references. That he said, Al-Hifdu fi al-Sigar kan naqshi ala al-Hajar. Memorizing whilst young is like engraving something on a stone. Can't be deleted. So the fresh young memory whilst you're free is a beautiful advantage. And that's from the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu When he said, take advantage of five things before fives. Sigar, sigaraka qabla haramik. Your, your young age before your old age. Wa faragika qabla shughlik. And your free time before you get busy. Because when you're going to get old, you're going to get busy. Family and work and this and that. You're not going to have time. So therefore, a person needs to make time if he doesn't have time. And he needs to find the time because this is what is going to guide us towards, towards the truth. And inshallah, we cut it short. But then after that, this is the era of the preservation and the collection of the Quran at the time of Abu Bakr. Then after that, it went to the time of Umar radiallahu an, Uthman radiallahu an. So in the time of Umar, uh, uh, there was no collection of, of, uh, that was needed. Rather, the same Quran that Abu Bakr, Bakr had, it was passed down to Umar. And then from Umar, it was passed down to Hafsa radiallahu anha. Who's Hafsa? Who's Hafsa radiallahu anha? And the wife of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So she had the honor of preserving that one combination of the Quran that the Sahaba agreed upon, and it was combined. After that, in the time of Uthman, Islam started becoming growing big, going through east and up and north and Europe, and Islam was spreading too much, and it was like even Islam was going through Azerbaijan, and it was going through Armenia. Imagine Islam was spreading. Alhamdulillah, and because of that, a lot of the people started differing upon the different dialects that the Quran came with. So one companion, like Al Hudayfa ibn Yamar radiallahu an, he came to Uthman and he said to Uthman, "I feel that the Quran and people are gonna become disunity. There's gonna be disunity in Ummah because of this. You need to combine everybody upon one Quran." So he see, seen that beneficial as well. So he again got the head of the new committee, Zaid ibn Thabit and a couple of other companions as well. Three from Mecca and Zaid ibn Thabit from Medina. And he, three from Quraysh and Zaid ibn Thabit from Medina. And because of the experience and the qualification, or you could say, of Zaid ibn Thabit, he was in this committee as well. And then what they did, they, he requested the Quran from Hafsa radiallahu anha, and they made copies of the Quran. They made seven main copies of the Quran. And he gave the main original one back to Hafsa. And those seven main Qurans were called the Mus'haf of Uthman. And all of them were the same. All of them were the same. Then they were checked upon. So then uh, Uthman Nafani said to uh, Zayd ibn Thabit, if you disagree upon Amata, then go by the three that are from Quraysh. Because he was from Medina. Go by the dialect that the Quran was revealed by the three. So like in a sense, Ijma' go by the three main ones that were from Quraysh. Why? Because the Quran was revealed upon the tongue of Quraysh as a first. Then the Prophet ﷺ requested as in the hadith of the seven letters to reveal it on upon seven different dialects. So he kept on saying to Allah, Oh Allah, it's going to be difficult for my ummah. Give me more, make it easy. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it could be read with these seven different dialects of the Arabs. And this is different to the seven qira'at, the seven different types of qira'at. And we will speak about that in more detail inshallah, because it comes under this science and it comes under this subject. So the seven different dialects are different to, there are dialects from the Arab tribes that were superior at the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then after that, these seven Qur'ans were spread out through uh, Kufa, Basra, which both cities in Iraq. One was kept in Medina, the headquarters of Islam at that time. One was sent to Me Mecca, one was sent to Bahrain, and one was sent to Syria. Sure. Uh, uh, Sham, Syria. And uh, uh, with, every res with every book, Uthman radiallahu anh sent a Hafid from the Huffad, the memorizers of the Qur'an that has been checked by the Sahaba and they agreed to teach the people that Quran. And he said every other copy that was made prior to this and different to these seven main Quran of Uthman have to be destroyed and have to be burned. And with this, the Quran was protected and preserved through these stages. Now the Mus'haf that we have between our hand is exactly with Allah's permission because it has been passed down with chains 
and it has been passed down and this is with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the full meaning and understanding of the ayah inna nahnu nazzalna dhikr wa inna lahu la hafidun surely we are the one who rev 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 uh, brought down the revelation and we are to it our protectors this is from its aspect that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will is that the, the Quran even the ones that we have today are the same copy as the Mus'haf of Uthman and the Mus'haf of Uthman is the same copy as the Mus'haf of Hafsa who, who she had which is the, technically the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr and the Mus'haf of Abu Bakr is with the agreement of the Sahaba has been combined like so and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will, will speak about the detail that of each of these stages and we speak about the, the names of the Sahaba that were important in each of these stages and we speak about what happened after the stage of Uthman ibn Affan till our time. And we speak about the ordering of the Quran, the order of revelation of the surah, and the order of the Quran that we see in front of us, meaning from Surah Fatiha first, then Surah Baqarah, then Ali Imran, all the way to Surah Al Ikhlas, Qul Aud Rabb al Falaq, Qul Aud Rabb al Nas. All of that, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and gives us life and ability, we we'll speak about it in our next meeting, whichever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. Okay. In three weeks time, inshallah. Three weeks, okay. Khalas, inshallah. Khalas, inshallah. We will continue as you had the Masjid Committee, may Allah reward them, uh, in the 4th of March. Barakallahu feekum. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward you all with Jannah for your patience and taking the time out. And if there is any mistakes, then it's from us and the shaitan. And if, uh, uh, if there was any correctness, then that's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And all knowledge refers back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadu la ilant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. And if anybody has a question, they may ask inshallah. Otherwise, barakallahu feekum. Wazakumullah khair.